Welcome everybody to The Conversation and we have a return guest this time around, the one and only Rapids Defender, the master of the basics, uh-huh. Moist Bone Vita. Welcome back, man. Good to have you on the show again. Thank you for having me. It's a, always a pleasure. Of course, man. And we would be remiss if we didn't have you back considering the summer that you've had lately because uh, you've been busy. Been quite intense. You've, you've been successful. Um, and it's been very good to see for, for us as folks here at the club. The fans, of course, you know, everybody, the players, the, your teammates, coaching staff, it's been very exciting to see your growth um, and just see you excel this throughout this 2024 season. Let's start with All-Star, man. All-Star 2024 out in Columbus. Just talk about what that experience was like for you in general. I mean, obviously, it's always a, an honor to be able to achieve such thing. I mean, for an aspiring uh, MLS player that just started a, a year and a half ago to think that I was going to be an All-Star, it's, uh, it's pretty... Pretty amazing for sure. I'm pretty pleased, but obviously it comes with hard work and dedication, as you know. And yeah, to be able to be in those type of environments with uh, players like Busquets, Jordi Alba, even uh, I forgot his name, Hugo Lloris, who was there. It's just like, wow, like, what am I doing here, you know? But uh, no, nah, obviously I'm pretty pleased. And to talk about like just uh, how the setup. Uh, like how it went really professional you already knew like what was going to happen towards the day two days before uh, it was going to happen so it was really professional and i loved it yeah did you talk to any of those guys busquets and in spanish um, maybe did you try take a crack at spanish maybe no not really i didn't speak to anyone i was just starstruck to be honest yeah but uh, i made sure that everyone was going to sign my jersey as soon as the game was done so when the game was on we all went back to the locker room and i grab a pen i mean the the sharpies and i went to everyone i was like signature please i need one please <laughs> and yeah everyone signed so that was really fun no that's excellent man and and i think maybe an added layer to that is the fact that you didn't go alone no. you got to go with the copy the capitan exactly. so keegan was what, what was that like to have someone with you you know because it can be maybe a little different when you're going to an unknown space on your own but to have keegan there with you the capitan the captain yeah. of, the, of the club what so was it like to have someone like yeah, that, that was with great you? that was great to have him there just because you know i've known him he's the first guy I met when I came here also, the guy that had me under his wings. So just to be able to be myself, be comf- comfortable being there, just like vibe with him as well, it was, it was really great, yeah. And I mean, again, there's so many personalities, so many folks that come to, 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 to this event uh, that, that are part of this team and the coaching staff, particularly Wilfred Nancy. Like, is, is that someone that you got a chance to talk to and kind yeah. of pick his brain a little bit? Yeah, again, yeah, yeah. considering he's coming off winning MLS Cup, he's, yeah. he's the coach for the MLS All-Star team. Did you get to kind of t- yeah, t- chat t- pick with his him brain too, a little? Uh, because he, he's a French speaker and he used to coach at uh, CFM back in Montreal. And when I was uh, 20 to 21 year old, I think, that's way, like just a little bit before I left for the United States, I used to work for... Uh, the, I don't know how you call this. You know the people that works in the stands on the stadium? Yeah. yeah. I was one of them. So for me to like watch him and be like up close to him, it was just like, it felt unreal. Because I, I really like the coach. He's a, I think he's a great, great person as well. And we had a, a couple of chats about the, the Copa America and how fast they went for me. And he, he seemed like a really good guy. So yeah, it was fun. That's that's good to hear, man. That The, the fact that you pulled as much as you did out of yeah. th- that experience from getting to talk to Wilfred Nancy, have everybody sign your jersey. Yeah, yeah. Cause again, that's, that's, you never know when something like that is going to happen True. again. So it sounds like True. you, uh, took full advantage yeah. of that opportunity before even any of this happened, Moise, uh, all-star Copa, which all these things that we're going to get into with you. Did you envision these sort of things happening for you at the start of the year, like 2024 preseason hits and you're like, all right, this is my year to kind of either break out and see what happens or did you set these goals for yourself saying listen i'm gonna make all-star i'm gonna be part of canada for copa america how, how did you go into this year knowing that last year you got some minutes but you felt like you maybe wanted a little bit yeah. more out of this season i felt like uh towards the end of the season last year i was gaining a bit more of confidence by how much playing time i was getting so i set some goals to myself for the, the upcoming year which was this year and in preseason i I talked to to Chris and uh, Neil, and we spoke about like what are the goals that I want to achieve uh, for for this year. And I said, uh, I think I want to be an All Star. I want to make it to the All Star game. And they said it's achievable if you you put to work and you believe in yourself. And why not, you know? And obviously there was a bit of uh, of luck there because uh, I didn't make it to like the twenty four. I think twenty two players at first got called up. I didn't get it. And then afterwards, when I came back for the Copa, like two days before 
people are supposed to report to the to Columbus. That's when I got called up. So I was like, wow, it happened. So obviously I'm really happy. Yeah. And to talk about uh, my goals for the national team, I I just felt like uh, it was a good time to prove not just to me but to my teammates that I could be that I can be helpful. But for that, I just needed to to start well at the Rapids and not like just go out there and expect that everything's gonna get there. I just felt like I needed to prove uh, myself here at the Rapids first, and then maybe you know get more more of a playing time uh, with the national team, and it did happen. So everything came you know step by step, and yeah, like I said, pretty pleased for sure. Will step you will step. you stop being so humble and likable, please? <laughs> No, I, I'm I'm just kidding, obviously. But it, you know, you talk about you. One of your goals was was to make the All Star team, and then you know, Chris said that's achievable, and then he was the one that. Did you really have no idea before that team meeting when he shared with you? Was that I swear that was a surprise? I had no idea. <laughs> Another reason why he's so likable. You know? I had no like, idea. He came to me. and He was like, "What are you doing for the All Star game?" Uh, <laughs> we were I all there. I <laughs> serious, seriously, I I was like. What do you mean, Alistair like game? I'm just going to probably be watching. Watch on TV. I'll be at home in, uh, in Denver, yeah. And he was like, yeah, you'll, you know, you'll play. I'm like, oh, yeah, sweet. Because you deserve to be on the All-Star team. It doesn't matter the, the circumstances. Stuff like this happens every year. Like Moise, you know, the, vo- the voting system, say what you want. Moise was an All-Star, is an All-Star in, in 2024, and, and, and deservedly so. And, and you represented yourself and the club ex- extremely well, and, and you should be proud of that. And actually never not be humble i i I like that from you keep keep your feet there on the ground and and i know you won't have a problem with that but he he, moses an all-star you know no doubt about it i don't think you're gonna argue no no two ways about it i don't care whether it was the first phase or second phase that for me moise was an all-star in 2024 Mm -hmm. and he got to go with their club captain keegan roseberry at least that's how i see it and you gave keegan a shout out there as well well deserved man again like i think just with the performances you put in for for this for, for this team this year and how you've stepped up in big moments um I would say it's no surprise to, to, to see you on a stage like that and earn an opportunity like that. You, that one that you clearly enjoyed as well yeah, and got to savor again, just kind of reaping the, the, the fruits of your labor, you know, with all the work that you'd put in uh, into this year. Um, how much has this guy been a help for you in terms of as, as from one center back to the next and, and giving you maybe some little tidbits, advice here and there to kind of mm-hmm. get, uh, managing little moments throughout the season? To be honest, I, I don't – maybe I said that in the last podcast, but, uh, you know, I Googled you, by the way. <laughs> I've seen like oh no everything you've done. <laughs> Careful Where there. You come from you drafted <laughs> Dallas, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I was just like, I mean, you're an MLS legend, pretty much. Thank you, you know? I appreciate and it. And for you to to have start where I've started, which in is in college, I I just felt like, yes, it's hard to to be at at that center back position and play against players that played in World Cups, Champions League. All those like big stages, you know, and for you to be a for me to be a young center back and have to prove myself at, at that level, even though they qu- they they're quite uh, old now, but still they they still have that in the in those uh, in their locker, and yeah, just to see you go from there and make yourself uh, win a uh, MLS Cup uh, for Toronto, mm-hmm. I just felt like if you did it, then why can't I, you know? Of course, man. And obviously, of I. I truly respect what you've done for for not only the Rapids but for the league. But yeah, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate yeah. it. And Moises helped me out, you know, because w- stepping away from the game a- after 18 years and, and straight into a developmental role to have somebody like Moise be our our first draft draft pick that year, you know, was is is you don't know what you what you're gonna get necessarily. I wasn't in on on that process or anything, but you know, this guy I, I haven't helped. Moise that much. Moise has developed himself. Moise is the master of the basics. He, you know, he uh, he's earned everything that that he has through his hard work and his dedication and stuff. Um, if it makes me look good, great. But like Moise has been such a, a joy to work with, and it, you know, everybody around him, his teammates, the coaching, the coaching staff, the front office. I feel like f- feels that as well. Um, and so it's it's not it's not just me helping him it's it's him helping me it's it's a it's a great relationship and I'm I'm excited to see it continue here and and, and see where it takes Moise you know yeah I think we all are man just mm-hmm. to see again just this this meteoric rise that we've seen from you but again that's part of the fact that you put in the work um, had the help around you as well to be able to put you in a position and and you followed through and took that opportunity and ran with it um, quite literally half the time <laughs> with with how fast that you run on the pitch. Um, 
but this this is one of many accomplishments that you had, Moyes. But in terms of just when you, when you found out that you became an All Star and, and were being recognized for for your play for what what you've done in the season so far on an individual basis, at least, does an achievement like that make you a bit hungry for more? Oh, hundred percent, sir. Because I think uh, by being able to to have this this much success in the short amount of time, you just think, oh, so if I can do this in six months, seven months, then what can I do in a year or two, you know? So I'm just thinking, okay, what's what's the next step? What can I do next to be a better player, a better teammate? So, yeah, obviously I strive for more. Yeah. And, I mean, you have. It's shown. Uh, moving on from a phenomenal All-Star game, again, well-earned opportunity for you to Copa America. That is that is not a small thing to be a part of, regardless of what country you come from, who you are. That that that's a big achievement just to be a part of it. Let alone the progress that you and the Canadian men's national team made in that tournament, and two t- two times that you guys go up against Argentina and really show them what you guys were about. Speak to that experience, just overall, what Copa America was like. You know, you were part of Gold Cup last year, or last summer with the Canadian nas- uh, national team, yeah. but playing more as a six, a little yeah. bit. Of, you had played it previously, like in college. But center back is like more more your no, position. Center back is my thing now. Exactly. 100%. So th- <laughs> the fact that you could play center back and 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 in your position, if you will, and starting playing every game. I mean, just what was that experience like overall for you, Copa America? To me, electric atmosphere for every game we played. It felt like we were in away games, but we were in the United States. And to me, I think Canada is really close to America. It's like connected, but we always had. I I won't say no Canadians, but we were short really short and we felt that but the fact that we were together we, I, I really feel like we we have a brotherhood with the national team and i just felt like we had the we had the numbers to to go fight against them and yeah to talk about like how was it in in games it was just going really fast you really had to think quickly execute quickly and yeah you had to be on top of the game for every game and i thought that it was a great way for me to to show what i can do and I think I, I pretty much took advantage of that, for sure. And people were downing me for PKs. I don't know if you knew that. People were downing me because back in, college, back in college, for the second round of uh, the tourney, I went up first to, to shoot. And I was still doing that stutter. But when I first got there, I put the ball on the spot. And I was so scared. Like, <laughs> Oh, my days. Uh, I, I was like, what am I doing here? This is not for me. But I was like, okay, let's try. Let's try. I missed. And I never felt that bad in my life. I swear. And I swore to myself that the next time I have an opportunity to shoot, no matter what stage I'm at, I'm going to take it. I'm going to score. And then it happened against Venezuela and Uruguay and now uh, Leon. So, yeah. Yeah. That's how it, that's how it went. Yeah. That's do, do you story. have enough confidence to spare? Because I was going to say, when I first saw you, I think it was against Venezuela stepping yeah, up to be one of the five. That was my first pro, pro I was like, PK. you don't often see a center back take yeah. a PK, one of the first in the five of that rotation. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, it's Moyes. Like, this man exudes confidence like no other. It doesn't surprise me and makes it on top of yeah. that. So, I mean, more <laughs> you know, credit to you, man. If, you, if you have enough confidence to give a round, I'm, I'm all for it. Did you feel confident stepping up? So, the Venezuela one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So confident. Wow. I zoned, like, I zoned out pretty much like I was just – Think I was just not thinking about anything else. Then Good for you, putting man. Putting the ball in the back of the wow. net, seriously. I I took one PK in my professional career, and and, and to be fair, it was it was in an MLS Cup final, right? And I got tunnel vision. My I was supposed to be the fifth taker, and I was like, please don't get to me, please don't <laughs> get to me. And literally tunnel vision, like the cameras right over your head, oh, you yeah. know. Like I wanted to, I just wanted to close my eyes, kick it as hard as I could, and, and get out of there. So. Props to you for the confidence, man. That's, I mean, I'm not surprised with this guy, <laughs> yeah. you know, but that's, that's, it's, whew, that'll, yeah. that'll test your nerves, you yes, know, especially does. in a it big does. moment like that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, to, to bring back to, to Copa America, it was such a great experience, man, just to, to see how just other teams fight for their country. It's just, it drives you. You just want to compete with them and be like, no, my country is better and you just want to give it out, out, you know? So yeah, it's, it's a great experience, man. I loved it, really. Oh, fantastic, man. And obviously, there's a bit of a difference between the what is the club level and the international level, right? Where, where do you feel like there is a difference or maybe even a learning curve for you? Where where was that a moment where you're like, oh, okay, the, the international game is very different, especially at this level, Copa America, when you're against Uruguay, Venezuela, Argentina. Yeah. Where did you see that learning curve along the way? Mm, to be honest, for me, it was just more of intensity-wise, just because of 
10 to the the stakes what's at stakes and if you look at the first game against Argentina we we knew that it was, obviously they were the best team in the world and we just wanted to limit the damages because they were playing against Messi like seriously <laughs> you have to do your best to like limit what he can do but obviously it didn't it didn't happen that day but we we I felt the the pressure more of the on the Peru game and the Chile game because that's when we knew that we had to win to go through and the Argentina the first game against Argentina you're like okay if you lose then you still have a chance but then on the Peru game you're like we have to win so then that's when you you feel the pressure and that's when the intensity goes higher and higher and then for the Chile game also you were like okay we have three points now all we need is a, dr a, a draw or a win which will make us go through for sure and we're like okay We have to give everything. And you could, if you were there in Orlando, my days. The Chilean <laughs> fans, no, they're, they're top. They're top. They were like screaming from minute one to minute hundred. Like it, it was insane. But for us to, obviously they had their red card. So that make, made it a bit uh, not easier. But we, were fe we felt more comfortable going to the game. But yeah, it was so intense. And then going to the quarterfinal intensity goes higher as well and Argentina second game for sure semi-final it's it's crazy so for me it's more of the intensity just because of what's at stake and you know it's a tournament so yeah you have to go through but it sounds like you enjoy it oh yeah oh if we have to go again tomorrow I'm there I'm there <laughs> it just it just uh, adrenaline uh, adrenaline rush yeah exactly adrenaline rush yeah exactly and then you just You just pump, man. You just want to go out there and fight again, you know. And after Argentina, yeah, we played Uruguay. And I was like, wow, I need this. Like, I want this every week, you know. Just because it, it, it gets you to um, your highest of performances. And you just want to have that every every week. But obviously, it's hard to do so. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to have to hit you because you, you exert so much confidence, man. I could use a little bit of that more often than not in my life. My goodness. I want, I want to ask about that, though. Yeah. Like, you know, co coming back, back from the national team, you, you've done it a couple of times. Do you feel more pressure to perform for, for your club team? Do, like, it, does the pressure go away a bit? Obviously, it's, it's a different level. It, it's a different amount of pressure, right? It, I, I think that that's okay to, to admit. Um how you know what what does it feel like coming back because it's not e it's not no, easy it's to not do easy. to leave leave a tournament like that yeah. and come back you know but i mean i don't feel the pressure from the outside i think i put pressure more on me mm -hmm. because of from where i went through at the Copa america and just by coming back to the club you're just like okay now my standard has to be that one you can't let down and that's just something i said to myself so i feel like yeah now there's more pressure on me to Uh, keep that standing high and yeah help my team as much as possible because uh, I love the Rapids and I want what's best for for, 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 for sure. sure man for yeah. sure so in the middle of all the success and the joy that you were feeling with Copa America uh, on the flip side there was a moment when when you made the tackle on Messi mm -hmm. and quite a few folks on, on social media in a very unjustifiable and, and irrational manner started getting after you yeah. with, with some of the racist abuse that, that is very public knowledge yeah. out there that everybody saw. And I got to say, Moise, like you handle that with a lot of class after the fact with, with your Instagram story that you had and just like enough with the BS. Yeah. I can't recall off the top of my head what it was, yeah. but I mean, you just handle it as, as classy, as classy as could be, man. But I, I think still maybe that, I'm sure that probably dug into you a little bit where it, it, it digs into you a little bit. And I, obviously that's not something that anybody would want to experience, but yet, There you are, put kind of put on the spotlight from 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 folks in an unjustifiable unjustifiable and irrational manner. How kind of what what was going through your head, man, and just how you how you manage that situation and kind of the support that you got from whether it's family members with folks at the club. Like, how did other people kind of corral and come around you to be able to kind of help you see you through that situation? I mean, whether whether you like it or not, players of my race are going to go through that stuff uh, at a point of your career. It's it's just how it is because the sometimes how good you play is gonna affect uh, people and sometimes it just show their true nature and they're just gonna come out saying stuff that maybe they don't think but it's just coming out and to me it's just part of the game really because that's what I chose to do and I knew that there was a possibility that stuff like that will happen and when it happened you have to be ready 
And yeah, I mean, obviously, I didn't want to tackle Messi. No, of and course not. For Argentinians, it's practically their god. So by doing that, you have to know that there's going to be repercussion, and it's just going to be now the eyes are going to be on you on how you're going to uh, adjust, react to that. And I think that for me, I was just I just wanted to focus on the people that were with me from day one. So which was my family, my coaches, my teammates, the staff, the my national team uh, teammates that were there for me until it happened. They were really supportive and told me that, hey, we got your back. And to me, I didn't want to do like I put I posted that story just to let everyone know that I was I was good. You know, nothing is going to change. But uh, yeah, the the team admin from the our national team wanted to do something bigger for 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 me to just show support and and yeah show that they were there for me but i just said to them that there's no need to do that because i just wanted to prove to everyone else that i know that we are together and for me for us to prove to everyone that uh, yeah they're with me it's for us to go through and go as far as possible and we did so so for me we showed everyone that we're together and I also want to shout out to the Rapids Nation for for showing out love to me uh, on that uh, Montreal. I think it was Montreal game where at the fiftieth fifteenth minute mm -hmm. and the sixty fourth minute they they showed love to me and I really appreciate that and it's gonna stay in my heart for 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 a long time. So yeah, props to that. And and as maybe as obvious as a question as it seems, I mean, what does it mean to have that that support? Speaking a little bit more to that and just in general from between the fans and the and the club family, just what does it mean for everybody to be able to step in and, and just look out for you and just reach out and say, asking, are you okay? Especially yeah. after something as serious as that. No, it just shows that uh, you've got support and whatever, whatever is going to happen, people that, people that are going to have your back are people that are priceless, really. And you have to take uh, uh, account of that. You have to know that by the way you react, it, it might affect, uh, affect people that are watching you. So you have to stay as classy as you can because you know that no matter what happens you have people that have your back you know so for me to know that i have you guys i have uh, my family i have the the canadian that, that are behind me it, it just means the world and to know that i can go through trials and tribulations and i won't be alone it's the best thing you can have really yeah it's well put man i don't know what else to say to that other than yes you have Every one of us behind you. Um, I think we just need to be abundantly, abundantly clear about it that there is no room for racism. There's just no um, reason for it, rhyme or reason for it whatsoever in the game or anywhere in society. Um, but I think we can see that you obviously not have that, not only have that big player mentality with how you handle the pressure, invited if anything with some of the big crowds with with the Chileans or the Uruguayans, whatever. But just also big, a big person with a big heart and uh, can man maneuver such a difficult situation in the way that you did. So. Uh, I don't know what more what could what what more one could say about you, Moyes, in terms of not just only as a player but as a person. I think just the way you've handled yourself on both on the pitch and off the pitch, I think, says a lot about you. Um, and it comes to no surprise in terms of seeing the you know the, the the joy and the excitement that we see from you as a person. Obviously, the quality that we see from you on the pitch. So, um, it's huge props to you, man. And again, as you know, and with between the fans and everyone at the club, that you have our full support always, man. Um, and yeah, like the one top last class, thing. top class, you know, like I'm, I'm happy to have a relationship with you. The head that you have on your shoulders, it, it, it means a lot. And I'm proud of you and, and the way you handle it, man. Like, I, I think it means a lot to, to a lot more people than, than you actually realize. So, so keep being you, man. Yeah. You're awesome, dude. That's great. Yeah. Um, and then a couple more things to wrap up on Copa America. So for those who don't know, Jesse Marsh, you know, currently the Canadian uh, men's national team head coach worked with Chris Armas, our head coach here at the Rapids at, at Red Bulls. For you, was there a bit of a transition or did you feel like you kind of settled in a little bit because of how similar the style of play is between the two? Yeah, I did settle in pretty easily, to be honest. There were different uh, words, but they meant the same thing. Like uh, he says, overplay, you know, that pass to the right back. Mm hmm. But Chris calls that easy, easy build. build. And there was other words too, like uh, I kind of forgot to be honest. But yeah, it was quite similar. But I, I understood that they were they were they were wanting me to do the same thing. From so for me, I adapted quite easily, really. And yeah, I mean Jesse's top coach, man. 
top coach. He knows exactly what what he wants out of the player. He's a a player coach as well. He really fights for the locker room, and he always wants what's best for you. So yeah, props to him. Really, he's top guy. Yeah. Did he sneak any? Any mention of you needing to be the master of the basics? Did he get that from no, Chris no, at all? No, no, I did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. No. Because I, as soon as I got there, I knew that I had to be the master of the basics. No BS. Just play simple, and don't don't go crazy with your. You know, you can. I can be, you know, flashy, do those step overs, ball rolls, all that stuff. But national team, nah, 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 nah. Just play simple, man. Don't try to be that guy. <laughs> master of the basics. How do you say that in French? Uh, le maître de la base. Le maître de la base. That always sounds so much base. better in yeah. another language. All right, Obviously I'll leave it to Moise just to say it in French because I'm not going to embarrass myself doing that. But <laughs> but at least we have it there in in, in French uh, for reference. It'll so. sound better in Spanish too. Uh, el maestro de los básicos, if we had to put it in Spanish, but I think it sounds better, better in French. Yeah. It pertains a little bit more I mean, to Moise. Spanish is good too. It's just English. English is. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Um, and then one last thing with Copa America, Moise, is, 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 is there like a moment? It doesn't even have to be on the pitch, but was there just some moment? It could be, but was there one moment from your experience overall from Copa America that, that stuck out to you and you're like, man, I'm going to take that with me for yeah. for the rest of my life, man? So, Chile game in Orlando. I had my brother, my mom, my uncle, and my cousin that was there. Wow. And my brother is just a huge fan of, of football. He loves it, really. He doesn't play it, but he loves it. And he supports me, like, with everything he has, seriously. And when we went through, and we, we tied, but we went through the quarterfinals, I went on my knees, and I started screaming. I was so happy. And my brother saw that. And my mom was filming him the whole time. And when I got on my knees and I started screaming, my brother started crying. Like, he was crying with joy. Like, he was so happy. And my mom showed me the video. And like I haven't, and sometimes I look at it, I'm like, dang, it's actually crazy. Like having, knowing that you're making your family so proud, it's just to, to, just to, to come the top achievement, really. So, yeah, that's what the moment I'm taking with me for sure. And obviously going to the semifinals, winning in PKs, obviously all that stuff. But that moment was the pinnacle. Family is everything, man. Yep, yep. Through through thick and thin, through mm -hmm. the yeah. best and the worst, they're there all the way through. And clearly, they're seeing you through your best. And clearly, they were yeah. enjoying it as much, if not more, than you were yeah, in terms yeah. of having some of these moments you've had this year. So that's a really – that's a wonderful moment. And thank you for sharing that. That's very – we appreciate you showing that that little bit, that side of you and your family as well. Again, just to see that how excited and proud they are of you while you're achieving all so many great things in such a short span of time. But again, to no surprise, just because of the work and effort that you've put in um this season man um we'll put a wrap on Copa america there let's talk leaks cup <laughs> um so to start obviously it wasn't ideal man so with with the four nil uh result at portland yep but it is 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 that good in the sense that in a tournament setting that you just have no choice to oh, just flip this just turn the page and, and focus to the next game talked about that as soon as the game was done in portland came in the locker room we're like hey it's a tournament no one's gonna remember that we lost four zero if we go through so we just have to go through, and we did. So now, forget about Portland. Next round, really. And then immediately to this game that we just had last night uh, against Leon. Kind of walk me through what were you feeling through through that game? Because it seemed that we were doing pretty well, yeah. and it was a little bit back and forth with yeah. Leon and, and us, and until Leon got that goal fairly late. I mean, but what, what were you what were you thinking throughout the match? For most? Leon is a really good team because they had a variety of uh, how they wanted to attack. Sometimes they're going through the middle. Sometimes they're playing long. So we really had to adjust on the cues and the clues that they were giving us, kind of. So, yeah, we tried our best, the, the back line tried our best to, to defend. And I think we did. And Zach was top that game, I, I have to say. He helped us quite a bit. And, yeah, I think uh, for us, offensive-wise, offensive, offensive -wise, uh, we had our chances. And it just we just needed a bit more uh, calm in front of the in front of the, the net. But the fact that we stayed, we kept our composure till the very end and found that equalizer, it just, boah, it just shows how we, we never back down, really. And, uh, yeah, the, you can see that there's a drastic culture change in the, in the locker room and no one wants to give up. So that's that's really good. And we went into PKs and I knew I was scoring. I mean, not to be <laughs> cocky or anything. I knew I was scoring. It's called I was confidence, just, not I was, confidence. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying, I was just saying, 
if everyone scores and Zach's makes one save, we straight. And uh, the, and seeing how Zach was playing that game, I was like, he's gonna make at least one. We just need to score. And then I scored a fourth. He makes a save. I'm like, let's go. Come on, Max. Maxo, come on. <laughs> you you score, we out, bro. Come on. And then he ah, it happened. <laughs> That happens. You're never gonna score all your PKs, and just the fact that you go in and and try to sh the, yeah. the score, he's got he's got he's got balls, man. To be honest, so <laughs> so you have to respect that. Yeah. And Zach makes another save. Zach makes another save. Come on, what do you want more? We go through easy. So yeah, that was a really good game. Was was there ever a moment during the match? And I feel like this team is 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 a special group, right? That the Deck kind of felt stacked against us. A couple calls didn't really go our way. They they get, yeah, they get this goal that kind of comes out of nothing. Like and and could it have been called back? I don't know. I, like, but I, there was never a moment where, where while I was watching the game, I thought, ah oh, man, it's like it's just not gonna happen for us. I believe even like goalie makes an incredible save on I believe yeah. your header right right before right just entering injury time. But there just there was there was a sense of urgency on the field, but no panic, just keep doing what we're doing and, and eventually we'll get the goal. And it took until there's 15 seconds left in injury time. But that's, that's such a good sign from, from a young group that is, is, is tightly knit that believes in, in what they're doing. Was there ever a point in the match that you thought, ah, oh, it's just, it's, it's not our night. Or were you pretty confident that mm. we were going to stay in this game? I won't lie to you. Mm. When they started going to the corner and protecting the ball, and I look at the time, I'm like, oh, this might be it, boys. This might be it. But then we get, we finally get out. There's a goal kick. Is that, is that giving me the ball? I'm just like, okay, I'm going for it. I go. <laughs> <laughs> I take the ball. I'm running with it. And I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. Master the basics. <laughs> 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 there it is. Master the basics. No BS. Play simple. And I saw that there was no, like, room for me to pass it to Keegan. So I came back, pass it to Maxo. Maxo gives it to Cole. Cole does it, uh, does his thing, drives with it, cuts inside. I'm like, don't shoot, please. Don't shoot because you're too far. Just don't shoot. Try to cross it a bit more, but don't shoot. <laughs> he crosses it, and I see Keegan. I see no. I see Yappy jumping for it. I'm like, ah. And I see Keegan behind him. I'm like, my eye just changed. It went from, uh, to, uh. <laughs> <laughs> And then Keegan drops it for, uh, for Rafa. Rafa scores it. I'm like, I didn't even run. I had no more energy to run to Rafa. I was like, oh, thank you, God. <laughs> Appreciate that. And then I I think it was uh, Vinesy or someone who was just next to me. And I gave him the biggest of hugs. Mm -hmm. And then we went to, uh, to PKs. But yeah. Great end of the story, really. Yeah. Yeah. And now moving on. Now moving on that on. note, moving on against Juarez, who we'll have here at Exporting Goods Park on Friday. How do you guys feel with, with the momentum that we have off that result last night going into a knockout round match and trying to play for a trophy? No, I'm pretty confident for sure because you know that when we play at home, uh, we're much more confident team. We know that we have uh, an advantage just by playing in altitude. I don't know if Juarez used to play in altitude. I have to, to check that. But uh, when we play at home, we know that we're in our fortress and it's hard to play against us so yeah it's going to be a, obviously we have to respect the opponent and know that they have qualities but we also have to know that we are a good team so we're going to go out there and try our best to, to get a result i mean just driving back to to the point drew made that it just seems that this team doesn't they find a way no matter what happens it's, it's exactly as that's i was thinking the exact same thing from the match last night as you were walking through it in terms of leon having the ball in the corner and just kids sitting there trying to waste time it, it had that feeling of like I don't know, like, we'll see. But then you guys pull that moment off. Master the bait. It started, it started with you, Moist. Like, Zach giving you the ball and you carrying, and then having that moment in the middle of you dribbling, just saying, let's keep it simple, and let's just roll with it and see what happens. Next thing you know, we get the goal that scores, puts us in PKs, and we move on. Uh, it just feels like this team just finds a way. It doesn't matter how, what what goes against them, whether even if it's some calls that we feel don't go in, in, in our favor, go against us, the quality of the other team, whatever it may be, it just feels like this, this team doesn't doesn't quit there's no quit in them so i think last night was a perfect a very perfect example of that at the death with hoffa get, getting that goal man so this team this team looks good you guys look good yeah yeah man it's a good group very good group it's a very very good group uh and i think one the fans are very excited to see as well they've, they've been able to see this year at dick sport against spark 
Um, and then last bit that we have here in terms of talking the MLS season. We still got a little bit until we get back into that, which would be our first game at Dallas on August 31st. Um, but we'll we'll talk on a collective basis and then with you individually with regards to the MLS season. Um, I think we've spoken to it a little bit, but what have you seen from this team, you know, from the last time we, we spoke to you on the podcast, like however many months ago at this point to now, what are some of the observations and things you've taken away from, from seeing what this team is about this 2024 season? Yeah. I mean, uh, if you look at last year and you look at this year, last year, we kind of have the same core of players, really fast, energetic people that could drive forward, people that could defend forward as well. When Chris arrived, he just knew what were our strengths and trying to uh, yeah, put emphasis in it, like I said, and make it as good as it can get. And I think, uh, yeah, with the, with the players that you have, if you look at Kevin, Calvin, Omir, Johnny, people that are really fast commanding, people that can go for a go in one v one situation and create something. We have Georgie, who's just like a magician out there. Cole, who has that, you know, uh, that drive who always wants to go forward and create something. You have Ali and, and, Co and Connor who can just like bust that midfield up, you know, and you have Max who's just like a solid rock. Vines who can put those crosses in and can also defend one in one, uh, good 1v1 situations. And you have Ke uh, Keegan who's just like, what can he not do? Seriously. He even golfs. <laughs> <laughs> he golfs, he plays baseball, he plays basketball, he does everything. He's just so good at everything he does. But yeah, you have Key and you have Zach Stefan who has just that experience under his belt where he played in Man City and can, you know, guide me who's a young center back who has not that much of experience. So yeah, it's it's a really good group and the fact that Chris is able to put everything together and make it the best it can, it just it just feels right. And I think the fans and the whole Rapids organization was waiting for that for quite a long time. And the fact that now it's gluing up and everything, everyone knows what to what to do, what to expect. It just it just feels right. And now we go into the last stretch of the season, knowing that we we can fight for a top four spot, knowing that we can have a, a home game for playoffs. It's just huge, man. Knowing that where we started it, and now thinking that we can be that team and can compete for an MLS Cup. It's just it's just huge. And now we just. Like I said, I want to strive for more, and I know that my teammates wants to want to do the same. So yeah, it's exciting to see what's gonna happen next. Really, yeah, yeah. Keegan is one of those guys. He's so, he's I just, swear, he's just pisses me off. <laughs> he's good at everything. Does everything. You could do something your entire life yeah. and be an expert at it, yeah. and he'll like pick it up and and just destroy you at it. And he'll like just walk away with like a smile on his face, like not say a word. You know, <laughs> that's our captain. That's our captain. <laughs> that's our captain, the capitan. Um, so speaking to your, it's been a bit of like a meteoric, very quick rise for you, Moise, from last year when you got some minutes here and there to now where Copa America, all-star playing virtually every minute of every game, basically and during the MLS season, League's Cup as well. How have you managed that? Like, because that, I've, that seems like as someone obviously who hasn't played professionally, but that seems like something that can be very difficult to manage because everything's just kind of coming all at you at once. And while it's all positive it can still be quite a bit to manage. So how do you manage that one physically and also mentally in terms of managing your, 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 your this quick rise that you've had in the past year or so with everything that all the success that you've had this past year? I mean, to be honest with you, uh, one of the best compliments you can get as a player is to, to be consistent and having the same good game for every game. Once you get that compliment, you know you're a good player, seriously. And when I had that stretch of uh, good games where it was like three, four games where I, I was solid, pretty solid, I, I had the team quite a lot, I was telling myself that this is not enough for you to be recognized, you know? You have to go on a longer stretch. If you look at defenders that are world-class, Van Dyke, Sergio Ramos, Cerro Pique, Carlos Puyol, even John Terry, you're like, they were consistent. It's not because they had one good game. It's different than being a striker because a striker just needs one chance and then he gets recognized for that goal. But a center back, you have to make the right play every play. And as soon as you make the wrong play, people are going to be pointing fingers at you because you make that wrong play and forget about all the good plays you were making. So for you, for me to just know that I'm on the hot seat, even knowing that I'm pretty good, I'm still on the hot seat because I want to be 100% 
for a hundred minutes, you know? And yeah, to be honest, I, I'm just trying to do my best every game and there's going to be growing pains. I'm not saying that I've been the best center back for every game. Obviously not. I've had bad games. If you look at Minnesota, uh, he's, he's been pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, but no, I, I'm pretty hard on myself and I, I watch like, I mean, you have to. I mean, Drew, you definitely did Of course did you that, have to be. Did that, did that sorry? you got to be your own biggest critic, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I've had growing pains. I've, I've tried to work on myself every day. So, yeah, just knowing that I'm still getting recognized for what I do good, knowing that I'm still, I've still got some stuff to adjust, it's, it's, uh, it's something you have to be proud of for sure. Yeah. I love that he just referenced some center backs from from our era. Huh? I Mike, know, right? Man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel as old right John now. John Terry, <laughs> Puyol. Yeah, oh, That's Carlos cool. Puyol, man, he was he was something. Um, so many good moments we've had this season, Moise. Is there one, be it just a moment on the pitch with teammates or whatever, or just a match that stuck out to you from this twenty twenty four season so far? Well, obviously, come on, March thirtieth, two thousand twenty four. Colorado against LAFC. Moise Bombito's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Moise Bombito, first MLS goal. Moise Bombito, Colorado's one against LAFC. Come on. Has to be that one for sure. To me. To me. And your mom was at the game. And my too. mom was there. My sister was there. Come on. What a day. What, what a, a day. That was a fun day. I was what on the radio call that day. Yeah. And the fans <laughs> was going the fans were going crazy too. What an atmosphere. Wow. Shout out to Georgie though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to Georgie. Like, he's a good player. Yeah, he's he's all right. <laughs> he's all right. He's all right. He's all right. <laughs> Back to the highlight, he's so good. He's so good. <laughs> a game like that, I think a lot of people would agree with you that that's that's a that's a moment yeah. in this season. As early early on as it was in the season for us, that's a moment. Uh, for you guys, how did you take that? Did, did you see that as a moment where it's like, wow, I think we can go and. And, yeah. and, and do something, accomplish yeah, things yeah. this season. And I, I was, uh, I was with Kevin too. I was celebrating. I was looking, pointing at my mom, giving her kisses and stuff. And I looked at Kevin. I was like, Kevin, this season, we on it. This season, it's got, it's got to be it. And he looked at me. He was like, Yup, I feel you, brother. <laughs> In that moment. <laughs> In that moment. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, we talked to cool. me like, Yeah, it's it. Th- this one. Yeah. It's gonna carry on since then, no. I think I think that's just one of many yeah, many of moments many, I think sure. that, that anybody really could pick out sure. if you from look the at, season. I mean, obviously, there's Real Salt Lake away yeah. and Real Salt Lake at home for the Rocky Mountain Cup. That's a huge moment for sure. And the fact that we went up and then they equal no, we went down first, got up, they equalized, and then Cole Bassett did his thing. That just and then there was the weather delay, so weird. For one hour, I had to eat pasta with like Alfredo sauce and <laughs> spicy marinara. Yo, my, How did, what did that my, do to you? Like peek behind the curtains there. <laughs> and I started eating that, and then Cal Porter comes in. And he's like, "Hey, warm up in 25 minutes." I just hate. I'm like, "You must be kidding me! <laughs> you must be kidding!" And I go, we go in the field. My stomach is making those noise. Like you have to go to the bathroom or you're done. <laughs> I'm like, "Hey." Give me 45, man. <laughs> Just give me 45 more minutes and we on it. Trust me. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, <laughs> we won. So <laughs> we're back to the bathroom. We've all been there, Mike. <laughs> oh, been man, there. who hasn't? Oh, it, that's, that's, well, I mean, yeah. having to play in a big game like that, I don't know if I've been in that situation. So I don't envy that, but more props to you for caring. You handled it well. I yeah. did not know during that match that you had to nope. go to the bathroom really bad. No oh. one could tell. So bad, man. <laughs> so bad. Um. So with... Just how well this season's been going, man, in terms of the MLS regular season, Moise. Like, where where do the expectations sit for this group right now? Playoffs, home playoffs, MLS Cup? Oh, MLS Cup. MLS Cup for sure. Because, I mean, we said that since the beginning. Like, as soon as Chris Armors came in, on the first meeting we had, he said, we're fighting for MLS Cup. And then from now on, it's been good to see that we're competing and we're not letting down. We're not like... uh, Let's say we'll have a bad game and then another bad game and then another bad game and then another bad game. No, it's let's say okay, we're gonna have another a bad game and then straight away back to back wins, you know. So just to know that we we want to strive for more. We know that there's gonna be times where it's not gonna be at our best. Obviously, there's no team that I mean there's teams, but there there was pretty rare to see that teams are gonna be the best for the whole season. There's gonna be times where they're gonna lose, but you just gotta tell yourself that the next game we're winning, you know. And it happened quite often for us, and that's something uh, we we look to do. 
and yeah, like I said, we want to fight for MLS Cup, hundred percent. Big goals, but gotta gotta dream big. Yeah, yeah. gotta dream big. It's Have big goal. goals to aspire to something, yep. right? Um, 100%. It's exciting to hear, you know, especially we look at, and you were part of it, Moise, where we look back at last season where just things, it just felt like nothing would go this this team's way. Whereas this year, it just seems like regardless of what comes this team's way, they find a way. Whether it, whether it's for the draw, even for, more often than not, it's been the wins to getting the full three points out of them. So, and that's a credit to, to the whole group with you, Moise, just, you know, just seeing how you've stepped up since last season in such a big, big, tremendous way. Uh, and as we've mentioned before, not just being the big player that you are, but the big person as well. Uh, I think that plays a big role in terms of how you're able to perform on the pitch as well. And, and, and that's something that, you know, just to be abundantly clear about, it, I think everybody at the club really appreciates. Um, and, and I think we can't be more thankful to have someone like Moyes here at the club uh, for, for everything that he offers as, as a player and as a person. So um, it's been exciting to see Moyes, see, see you in the group and, and seeing the pro progress, the accomplishments they've made throughout this season, the big moments like LAFC winning Rocky Mountain Cup. Um, and now Leaks Cup, right? And that Leaks Cup, we're moving on. We have Juarez that's coming up for, for fans. So if you want to come to the match at Dick's Sporting Goods Park, that's going to be Friday, August 9th. August 9th, correct? Yes. August 9th. August 9th. Tickets, well, from when this episode comes out, tickets will have already been on sale. So buy, buy, buy your tickets. You guys do not want to miss what is going to be a big Leaks Cup matchup. Moise Bombito, of course, is going to feature in that match. Um, and a big match, a knockout round match, round of 32 against uh, Juarez. And... It's win or go home at this point, right? Uh, probably exciting for you guys to kind of, as someone like yourself who enjoys that pressure, enjoys those big moments. So it's exciting to see if any indicator in terms of how exciting these, these League's Cup games are. If you're at the Leon match, you were on the pitch, you guys felt the environment, what that was like. It was a fantastic environment with the fans, and we want to replicate that. So again, Friday, August 9th, uh, League's Cup match, round of 32 matchup against Juarez on Friday, August 9th. 7.30 p.m. kickoff. You can get your tickets on Colorado Rapids. Dot com. And before we close out the show, as you already know, we like to give our guests the opportunity to, to give thanks, whether it's to someone, to something. The floor is yours, Moise. I want to give thanks to C.S. Saint Laurent from Montreal. Shout out my guys, Wesley, Yann, Safwan, Cédric, Rafik, Aubang. Did I miss someone? Uh-oh. I think I'm good. <laughs> You're going to get a call or text. I miss you, I love you, brother. Oh, yeah. You're probably going to get a call or text probably if you miss somebody. Get a call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Ibrahim Kondé, my guy. Kondé. Didn't forget you. No. Got they it. sound a lot cooler yeah. than your current teammates, yeah. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you guys. <laughs> yeah. um, well, there you go. Shout out from your man, Moise. Yeah. Um, and again, Moise, we, we, can't, we can't say enough just how, how, how much we love you around here, having you here at the club again because between the big player and big person that you are. Um, Keep getting after it, man. Like I think there's just still more to come for you on an individual basis and with everything that you're doing. That success is bleeding onto the rest of the team as well. Keep at it, man. We love you. We're excited to see where the seasons can still go between League's Cup and then, of course, the rest of the MLS regular season once that kicks off again. So, Mois, appreciate you having on the show, on the podcast again, man. You're welcome to come back anytime for a third time maybe. Huh? Anytime, Thanks. anytime. Maybe I miss someone too. Yan oh. Tuali. Yan Tuali, if I miss you, <laughs> my guy. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> If not, call or text him. Just give him a hard Let time about know. it if you didn't give him a shout out. But other than that, guys, that'll do it for this edition of the Colorado Rapids podcast. Be sure to tune in to the next edition. So that'll be it from us. See you guys in the next one. <laughs> <laughs>